What's up, Technology family? Welcome back to another episode of the Technology News Talk. We have another table discussion uh, interview for you guys today. And I want you guys to help me my new special guest on the show today. Um, he's a award-winning uh, comp composer, composer for Shashai uh, My Monster and the director of audio operations for uh, OSM Advertising and, and the producer of a, a happy anniversary film. And everyone, please welcome uh, Luis uh, uh, Pinez. Uh, uh, welcome to the show, Luis. Hey, how's it going, man? Luis Paz here. How are you? Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, all right. So, uh, so Luis, give us a, a, a brief uh, bio on your, uh, of yourself and what made you want to become a, a composer that, that you are today? Um, actually, before I went out to uh, Full Sail, I got a gig writing uh, some music on a fishing show. And uh, that was kind of the first time I, I kind of had any experience with that. And I kind of fell in love with it off the bat. So I went to school, learned about it. And uh, after I graduated, worked on a film called um, Stopping at All Stations. And I really enjoyed just the whole process and like the psychological part of writing a score for a film and how, how you tell a story with that. Um, and from there, I kind of, I partnered up with uh, my partner Hayden, Hayden Blades. Um, we worked together at the advertising agency where I used to work. And um, from there, we worked on a film called Homewrecked and that got on Amazon. And we just started like, really working together and kind of feeling each other out in the sense of like music talents and what, what our strengths are. And it was just like a really good combination of, of attributes, you know, so we worked really well together. And uh, since then, we've just been Shy Monster writing scores since 2016. Awesome, awesome. So as a composer, um, how do you see uh, music storytelling and how can you describe music scoring a film? I mean, music is, is a language, right? So just like um, you, you see in any film, um, whether there's a language through cinematography or the language of lighting, um, I feel that lighting is a really good parallel to how music acts because um, it's like color is almost like the melody of of the song and and vice versa and we kind of try to color the film with sound palettes you know it's it's about exploring sonic um avenues and not just your typical sounds of orchestrations which we do and when it, when it calls for um you know we do that but it's for me scoring a film is creating the worlds that the film lives in and and telling the story of the writer and director uh, how they want to approach the film and you know sometimes there's a juxtaposition between what you're seeing and what you're hearing um, you know sometimes you'll see like violent footage and very happy music or, or vice versa and it creates you know a dissonance in the audience and there's different ways to manipulate or to create a different emotion from the audience by what kind of music you play and I, I just love that journey of it. Awesome. So when you talk about a, a music composer, let, let's say someone gives you um, a horror film, like uh, how would you compose that? Like most of the time you would see like when you see Nightmare on Elm Street, you see like the little girl saying one, three, Freddy come before you. Or you see like Star Wars, you see like uh, bun, da -da, uh, like it's a, a space adventure movie. And then also for Indiana Jones, that's another adventure uh, adventure movie. Um, when you think of action movies, you think of like like high speed chase uh, and stuff like that. So my uh, my uh, my other question is is that um, if someone gives you a certain genre of a certain film, like how would you compose it in your own uh, original way? Like uh, you have John Williams, uh, you have other composers that uh, that create new stuff for like uh, if it turns to a certain genre of the film. So the question is like, how would you make something original? for that certain genre of that film? Well, I think it's important not to be pigeonholed into what you assume something would be in. Um, you know, sometimes a happy song, you know, or something very light and childlike can be as scary as the scary, like very ominous sounds, depending on how it's used. It's all really about the service of the, of the story. You know, you're, you're, you're not there to, you know, show them everything that you can do in a necessary like 
these, these are all the colors I have. It's about choosing the right colors, right sounds for that specific film. So if the story, you know, maybe is a, a, a girl that she's haunting a playground or something like that, it might be better to do something, you know, where you, uh, like a child, a childish rhyme, a nursery rhyme, um, rather, that p kids know and use that and, and kind of morph that into something ominous later with sound design or just morphing things into it. But yeah, I think it all has to do with the story and you can't really say that, oh, I'm always going to use this sound or that sound um, or, or approach it in this way. It's always how I approach it is working with the director and, and getting what story they want to get out and what emotion they want from the audience at that moment. And then we go from there because there's so many sounds, there's so many instruments, so many ways of approaching something that, you know, to limit me yourself on, oh, this is how I go about it. Like, it's kind of like basketball. If you, you're not going to go the same layup every time, you're going to want to change it up, you know, because to each person you have to adapt. And I think adapting to every script is the most important thing. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, like I mentioned before, you are the director of audio operations for uh, the advertising. Can you explain your uh, your work in uh, uh, over there and uh, how the the company has been treating you as far as in your role? Oh, actually, I used to work for them. Um, I don't work for them anymore, um, but it was a great job. Um, I, I we do commercials, so we would do about like three hundred commercials a month, uh, and I would produce the the audio for them. Um, you know, so doing that, you, you manage, you know, another, another audio engineer, we mix, um, you know, the dialogue, the music, we choose the music for, for the spots and, um, working with the voiceover actors, um, to get the audio that we need. And then of course, putting sound effects to like, you know, the cars sliding down the road and doing stuff like that. So we work with Honda and a lot of bigger brands, um, down here. I think there was, we, we do all this, well the South Florida Hondas, there was like a Gozadera song at one point that they uh, partnered up with uh, Gente de Zona. Um, and that was, you know, received pretty well. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Awesome. And then last thing we also mentioned, um, yeah, you also uh, produced uh, um, a happy anniversary. So tell us about uh, what, what was that uh, experience working on that short film as a producer? And besides being a composer, would you consider doing the producing as well? Um, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, that was my first film that I ever produced. Um, I've produced music videos uh, with my, my partner, Hayden. Um, he usually does, you know, the bulk of the work. He does the editing and stuff like that. Um, but I've wanted to get my, uh, my feet wet in, in producing because I felt that I've always had a decent eye for, for talent and the type, type of people that we work with. And if you kind of think of, you know, resources in that way, and like each person has their own style. So that style, you know, will affect the film um, differently, obviously. Um, so choosing the right people for the film is super important. And I was, I was extremely happy that we brought on Ariel Ramon to be our cinematographer um, for happy anniversary. He really, and, uh, and Alex Borges, he, him, them two created the real ambiance of, you know, the coloring and the lighting and, and just the shots in general. But yeah, I liked, I liked working with a team and, and, and building something from the ground up and, and learning a lot as I go along. Um, I'm currently working with a couple other producers, um, a new sh uh, short film. It's a working title, um, but it's called um, uh, Women Prefer Richards. And it's, it's good. It was, I love the script. It's a well-written script and I'm kind of really excited to be working on it. Um, I'm not going to say too much because uh, I, I want you guys to get the full effect here, but yeah, I'm really excited to be working on it. We got some, a great team that we've um, got at the top right now and just recruiting, you know, the, the, the right people on the job. And I, I believe uh, Alex, I mean, Ariel has already uh, committed to coming on for the film. So Really excited about that as well. Awesome, awesome. You kind of really got to jump into my next question. So um, you did uh, mention uh, what you're working on right now. Is there any other upcoming projects that you're releasing soon? And what other projects that you're working on besides someone that you just mentioned? Absolutely. Um, yeah, we just dropped a single, Shy Monster. So if you want to check us out on Spotify, we're just a Shy Monster. 
And uh, yeah, we dropped the single, it's called Jinx Remover. And yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's a cure-all for, for everything that's going on. <laughs> um, but it's, we joke around, but it's, um, you know, we've been working on this album for about four or five months. And it's crazy because we have two other albums, you know, getting ready, you know, we already got the music for them, but um, it's just getting into the process of getting it ready for release. Um, but yeah, we're going to be releasing our next single, Cold Flow, um, pretty soon, about three weeks. And uh, there's going to be more music coming every every couple months. It's a couple weeks, actually. Um, there's going to be a, a new single um, for the next couple months. And it's going to be really exciting. So make sure you follow us on, on Spotify or whatever you, um, you stream your music on. Because uh, we got a ton of music coming out. I think you guys enjoy it. Awesome, awesome. We'll uh, we'll have those uh, link in in the description box so you can follow them on, on social media, uh, Spotify, and any other links that that you probably they as project on. Yeah, we'll have that in the description below. And then also to our next question. So, being a composer, is there any famous music composer that inspired you to to be a composer? Um, I think I've always wanted to be a composer, but I've definitely been influenced by great film scores and, and composers in general. I've always loved uh, John Carpenter's style, um, the 80s synth, um, you know, very dark and ominous and the horror vibe. Um, and I've always liked Hans Zimmer because he creates these epic scores. But the, all these people are, are their own composers. And the, the idea is, it's great that they influence. I mean, you know, get influenced by a lot of great music and scores, but you don't, the idea is not to be another you know, on Zimmer or another John Carpenter. It's really creating your own voice and, and, and becoming your own you, you know. So, um, you know, some other composers, um, uh, Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor, when they work together, I love those scores. The one they did for the, the Patriot Day is fantastic. Um, uh, Cliff Martinez is another great composer. He's He's a perfect example about depending on what kind of story it is, he changes up the the vibe. I, the score that he does for the show, Nick, the Nick, um, was fantastic because he's using these synthesizers, which kind of parallels what's going on in the story of this cusp in, in um, medical technology. So it's the like pioneering age of medicine in the sense of how synthesizers were in the pioneering age of a different sound. So it kind of makes sense with, with what he's trying to say in that story. And I, and I really appreciate that. Um, and, and there's a ton of great composers, that, you know, that either are not even, you know, necessarily the, the most famous. There's so many, you know, great composers out there that, you know, there's a great community and people give each other feedback and, you know, everyone has a voice. It's just, it's getting heard. You know, it's a tough part. So, awesome, awesome. So we talk about all these great composers. So my next question is: um, Which films do you think has the best music? Not only the best music score, but also the best soundtrack. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's a tough question. Um, wow. Um, I mean, I really love the score from the thing. Um, the Ennio Mar Marconi, he fortunately passed away recently, and that that was a big influential score on me. Um, I, I I have a hard time. Something is the best. It's all relative. So I would just say that the you, thing. You can name as many as you want. You can <laughs> I mean, obviously, uh, I'm a big Stanley Kubrick fan, and uh, in 2001: A Space Odyssey. What what they do with classical music, and um, it, it, it's really. Uh, it's an experience and, and, and that's what I really love about it. It's just something that um, it just creates a whole immersive way of, of looking at a film because of the way he uses music in his films is, is, is fantastic. Um, I mean, a lot of Tarantino uses a great, he does a great job using music in his films, kind of like just the positioning things and creating creative ways about how to, how to score a film. Um, my goodness. I, I love the score from Drive, the soundtrack from Drive. Cliff Martinez is on that one. Uh, that's got like a really cool retro vibe. Um, and if you like orchestration type stuff, um, 
the one in Arrival. Oh my goodness. Or yeah, it's just called Arrival. Yeah. So that film, there's it was it was scored by Johan Johansson that also passed away unfortunately. Um, but there is another song that is used for Max Richter, and it's it's called in the the day of the night is and the oh, I can't remember the song name now, but um, that that song it always gets me. They play it right at the end when they reveal the whole like uh, plot of the story and give you the whole twist or whatnot. Um, and it just gets you like just gets you right in your heartstrings, man. So if you get if you like that, definitely check out that film and and that score for sure. Awesome, awesome. So our uh, last question of, uh, for today. So. With everything's going on with COVID nineteen, uh, really put a nail on uh, not us filmmakers, but also uh, Hollywood as well. So, what are your thoughts on the new normal of Hollywood in the wake of uh, COVID nineteen, and how we can adapt until the, until we can find a vaccine for for the for the coronavirus, and and not how we can get back to normal uh, that we the way we uh, we want to. Um. That's a pretty loaded question. Um, so, I mean, I'll start with this. I believe there's this is a, definitely a time of, of adaptation and, and transition. Um, I mean, you've seen it in certain companies that are releasing straight to video or like straight to stream um, type purchases where they're kind of taking out the middleman of the theaters, which is a really interesting uh thing that's going on right now just because once there's a con sequential consequences of that whether it be the theaters not playing a certain uh, distributors films like in Universal's case or uh, just a, a general partner contractual issue of whether they should maybe come to an understanding of something moving forward so that they are playing the films and maybe giving them a percentage of something like that but you can in times of you know, limitations, it creates creative, it focuses and makes us become more creative because you have to. Um, and, and that's why you're seeing that with these kind of things. But that's an interesting case in itself because, you know, typically the Oscars are by, you know, how many theater really, you need a certain amount of theater releases to be considered. So moving forward, I'm curious to see how um, this affects all that and, and how technology will continue to be used in more in streaming and, and that side of the, the feature versus film versus theaters, which they've been um, declining now anyways. Um, so it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with that for sure. Um, as opposed and when it comes to, you know, getting what people are doing now, I mean, you got to be creative, you know, the people that survive are, are the ones that are creative. You have to create stories, with the limitations you have, um, you know, even if it's teaching your actors to light the room correctly and create a story around that and use those limitations. Um, if, if, you know, you want to create content. Um, also, I mean, it's just about being safe, man. And, you know, just following what you got to do, wearing a mask, you know, washing your hands, you know, trying not to go out as much, you know, but I mean, just be safe, be smart, you know, use your head. It's a lot of common sense, man. It's just be do the right thing, but um, I guess when it comes to getting to back to the new normal, who knows? You know, it, it really depends on what's what's going on. It's uh, unfortunately it's a herd of people, so it, everyone has to kind of do their part for for us to get out of this and eventually get out of the vaccine. But I mean, I, I think it's good that there's people are able to create different uh content and and become creative with what they're doing and it allows us um to fix these problems with solutions versus just kind of arguing at each other and uh and all that i mean there's there's always a solution it's speaking of uh creating and try to uh create new things that uh, will try to work around with the new normal is there any certain projects that kind of like stop you or kind of like slow you down when the, when the coronavirus hit and how you were able to, uh, to work around it? I mean, I, I think again, we're, it's all about adapting to it. And so we now people are much more comfortable with using technology like Zoom or any kind of streaming service. 
um, that allows people to have meetings like that. As before, I think people were hesitant to it and they didn't want to maybe learn the, the process or how to go about it correctly. Um, but now it's like, you know, a ton of people are using it. And it's become a great tool because what meetings that you could do, you know, from a Zoom thing can get people from different parts of the state. And now you're not bound just to people locally in your area, which is fantastic. And you could have more minds that are working on the project that are capable and, and, and able to do you know, good work. Um, as opposed to slowing things down, um, I mean, obviously a lot of productions have been halted, so um, there hasn't been too many pictures being being made and, and being produced, but the ones that were made and are in post-production um, have come out and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's a, that's a tough situation because you gotta, you know, we have to wait until it's, we can figure out a, a game plan to be able to work on a production and not be <laughs> so close to each other, which I, you know, I think it's difficult at the moment. So, um, yeah, I mean, from there, we also did, we're obviously holding up on, on our shooting, but that really just gives us more time in pre-production and making sure that the film is done um, the best as possible. Um, and, and if we have all the pieces in, in pre-production, you know, but when we feel that it's a safe uh, time to do it, you know, we'll be able to be a very efficient shoot and have everything all worked out uh, ahead of time. So that's, that's really good. All right, all right. That's awesome, man. Uh, Lewis, I wanted to take the time and say thank you for being on the show today. And all my uh, audience out there, if you want to follow me on, on social media, Spotify, or any other projects that uh, they might have worked on, the link is going to be uh, in the description below so you guys can check them out. And other filmmakers out there, if you want to uh, uh, look for a composer and help you put music in your film, go ahead and hire this guy. Peace, man. All Thanks, right. brother. All right, all Thanks. right. So, uh, hey. That he's Lewis and I'm Trico, and we're signing off. Peace. Thank you.